Chloe is about as edgy as a female Bart Simpson, but standing in front of a train until the last moment elevates her to a level of douchebaggery that can never be forgiven. And goddammit, I used to defend this character. I can't believe Firewalk is playing a show at the old mill. Due to a voice actor's guild strike, none of the original cast was able to reprise their roles, including Ashley Birch. Chloe's stand-in voice actor, Rihanna DeVries, does a pretty good job. The rest of the cast, however. Chloe has a cell phone. She doesn't need to scribble reminders on her palm like this is the 90s. Mind your own business. Damon, who will become the villain by the last episode, is first introduced as an NPC with one line of dialogue. Is it just me, or did this game copy its art style from The Sims 3? Help you, miss. It's only now, seeing Jonah working as a bouncer, that we learn that the Life is Strange and Tomb Raider franchises are part of a shared universe. It's possible. Same publisher, after all. It's not a bad fake, kid. But you're in over your head here. Do yourself a favor and scram. Are you really that concerned with a fake ID? This concert is being held at an abandoned mill that looks like a huge fire trap, so this can't possibly have approval or permits. Underage drinking is the least of your possible worries. Also, it says something about this town when the illegal indie rock concert at the old mill is showing more professionalism than the school which allowed students to use a pool for unsupervised parties with underage drinking. Since this game is a prequel, that means no max and no time rewinding. Instead, Chloe can backtalk people into submission. Let's see how effective she is at destroying this man's self-esteem. Isn't it past your bedtime? Aww. Isn't it past yours? Whoa, go easy on him, girl. He has a family. I'm more like Red Sonia riding a panzer tank. Red Sonia is not the movie you want to be comparing yourself to. Also, I'm not sure that the millennials this game desperately panders to are really well versed in Red Sonia references. You could have a flamethrower, an army of robot ninjas, and a motherfucking dragon on a leash in there, and I'd still kick your ass. <laughs> this level of cringe is illegal in at least seven states. Go on in. Shouldn't she at least have to pay admins or show a ticket? 20 bucks, baby. 20 bucks? That's robbery. That guy's a dick. Yeah, screw that guy wanting money for banned merchandise at what appears to be a free concert. Also, $20 for banned merch is a bargain. Normally, it would cost you 30 Cold beer, free for the taking. What kind of concert is this? $20 merch, free beer, and no entrance fee? There's the indie experience, and then there's going broke. You holding? I could definitely use something to take the edge off. Girl, you need more than a little pot to take off your edge. Of course. As soon as you give me the 175 bucks you owe me. Chloe always seems to owe Frank money for drugs. Drug dealers do not normally establish lines of credit for the obvious reason that junkies and users are not the most likely people to pay back debts. <laughs> you bumped into me, remember? You were headed into a mosh pit with an open beer. That was going to be spilled on you at some point regardless. Yeah, I know him. He works for Damon. Damon Merrick? I see you've heard of him. This is his place. Damon's uh, a friend of mine. Well, he's only named Damon, which sounds suspiciously close to Damien, so I'm sure he's a great guy. There are times when I wish I could tell the characters of games I'm playing that they are being watched by an audience and what they are doing will be turned into animated GIFs. You spilled my beer, bitch! Yeah, a while ago, and then she went upstairs and you didn't bother stopping her. Did you somehow get more pissed off in the time between then and now? Time to kill a person over a spilled beer on my shirt, I guess. Rachel Amber puts her stage acting talents to good use by showing up at the perfect time to save Chloe. Even though Rachel didn't witness Chloe spill beer on the guy, the guy threatened her follow Chloe, or see Chloe head upstairs. We can't possibly go around Frank, who has his arms spread out, or follow the girls into the mosh pit where we could beat on them and probably not draw any attention since it's a mosh pit. This is not moshing. I see a distinct lack of punching, crowd surfing, flashing, and getting kicked in the nuts. Did they reuse Commander Shepard's dance animations for this? In the morning? Come on, girl. Save that for the afternoon. Fun fact. Shark babies eat their siblings in the womb. Maybe that's why I'm an only child. I'm pretty sure it's because your dad died before he could have any more kids. But this sounds edgier, I guess. Chloe has the memory of a goldfish if she has to write change clothes on her hand every morning. Maybe cut back on the pot just a little. How do I want to express my teenage angst today? That is not a question you have ever needed to ask yourself because you are a walking mannequin of angst. Not like this. Not like this! When games use memes, it's always like checking Facebook and seeing your parents posting years old memes about keyboard playing cats. He calls me girly. He's a dickhole. He can be old fashioned. Yeah, an old fashioned dickhole. Shakespeare weeps that he cannot write dialogue this well. Dad was a good man. That's not fair. I'm starting to believe Chloe made a better supporting character than lead. You're right. I'm sure dad and the mustache would get along great. It's a big bed. There's room enough for all three of you. Even when you are insulting your mother, maybe don't insinuate that she's a whore who's into menage a trois. There are certain cracks you don't walk on while breaking your mother's back. This is my life now. Kill me. All in due time. David's lawnmower. Maybe mom and I like our lawn the way it is. Ever think of that? I've had way too many sins making fun of how annoying Chloe is already, and I've passed on quite a few so this video doesn't last for over an hour. But being edgy over a lawnmower? 
Pick your battles better, kid. You could actually be good at this, if you lost the attitude. My attitude is what makes me special. Have you seen the Tumblr posts about me? I've got nothing else. So does Chloe hallucinate her dad on his fateful drive every time she gets in a car? Or is there something special about this trip to school that triggered it? Hey, Chloe. Oh, hey, Elliot. For all you millions of Warren fans out there, here is his character archetype repurposed for this game. It would have honestly been funnier had they stuck with Warren and had him friendzoned by both Chloe and Max. Do you want to go together tomorrow? I like how this game doesn't even give you the option to say yes to this. Chloe will friendzone Elliot no matter what. Who plays D&D with just a dungeon master and one player? Got my DVD? One Blade Runner. Director's cut coming right up. The director's cut of Blade Runner is one of the worst cuts. You should be ripping the final cut. Also, Chloe already owned Blade Runner, since we know she used to watch it all the time with Max. Hell, Chloe has a journal entry in this game where she admits to rubbing one out over Pris. Rachel Amber? You're asking me? Didn't you two go out last night, or was it just, like, a friend thing? Every student at this school already knows and talks about Rachel and Chloe hanging out last night because of one photo they took together. That photo was only taken a few hours ago, and everyone has already had a chance to see and gossip about it before school even started. You should join our game. You are an elf barbarian. Sure, you're in the middle of a campaign and Chloe hasn't created a character. And who makes an elf goddamn barbarian? This D&D &D session is honestly the best part of the game. It's amazing how much more relatable Chloe can be when she leaves the angst behind and just has fun. I can't believe Rachel posted a photo of the two of us together last night. Am um, I still an outsider if I'm hanging out with Rachel Amber now? It's really not that deep, Chloe. You're not becoming a normie because you took a selfie at a concert. Congrats! You've actually got me feeling sorry for Arcadia Bay's most spoiled brat. This makes for an awkward scene. Chloe standing up for Nathan Prescott, the guy who will eventually kill both Chloe and Rachel. I suppose they wanted to show that Nathan wasn't always a psycho, but this is kind of like Paul from the second Friday the 13th movie saying Jason is a killer, but he has some dank ass weed, so he's not all bad. Here's the major problem with this relationship from a storytelling perspective. Chloe and Rachel are both examples of manic pixie dream girls who show up and pull a disillusioned character into a more exciting life. Chloe swoops into Max's life and brings intrigue and excitement to an uneventful existence, and Rachel does the same for Chloe. Should be Life is drama. Think you're funny, don't you? Care to wink at the audience a bit more to prove that you're in on the joke? Sweet caller, Pepe. That is clearly not Pepe the Frog, but that is hardly the worst thing about this sin. Oh, could you grab my belt for me? I think it's in my bag over there. If you changed into your costume inside the changing room, your belt would still be there, not in your bag out in the classroom. Last night? was amazing. Well, Chloe was assaulted and punched in the face. That seems more like a 4 out of 10 to me. Let's get some low-key marching band music over this scene of budding teenage romance. Perfect. I bet you're wondering what we're doing. The thought occurred, yeah. Well... I wanted some company. And you decided that company would be the girl you met once and know nothing about? Considering you are actually headed to the park to confirm if your dad is cheating on your mom, I would think you would want to go alone or with someone you've known for more than one night. We should play Two Truths and a Lie. It's a game where each person offers up three facts about themselves, two of which are the truth, and one of which is... A lie? Rachel is supposed to be really good at detecting lies, as evidence from the two truths, one lie game she plays with Chloe. However, the story will revolve around her father having lied to her her entire life and Rachel never realizing it. New York, huh? I've never been. Not a world traveler? Chloe is 16. That's not exactly enough time to have seen much of the world. One day, I'm going to climb Everest. Rachel has so much of her life planned out already. Would be a shame if something terrible happened to her. This game's dialogue is like a mafia goon threatening you. You're hella mysterious, Chloe Price. Uh, hella? <laughs> Who says that? It's a Cali thing. It's probably better to ignore cringy dialogue from the first game rather than address it in the sequel. When your dad is the district attorney, I guess lying is something you're used to. Rachel is the daughter of the district attorney, something that was never brought up back in the first game and makes her disappearance in that game a huge plot hole. The teenage daughter of a public official going missing would be a huge deal, and Mr. Jefferson targeting Rachel knowing who she is would be incredibly risky for him. Maybe I can MacGyver something up. Careful, your 40-year-old writer is showing with references like that. Last I checked, you're supposed to be Chloe Price. Yet we've been ditching now for hours, and we haven't even gotten wasted yet. You chose the location. There are not a lot of ways to get drunk at a park. At least not without some creativity. Drinking while walking on train tracks ranks up there with other stupid activities, such as smoking while pumping gas, cleaning a loaded gun, and texting while driving. Whoa. Hey, check this out. What? It's a junkyard where you'll be buried after being murdered. It's so beautiful. I guess I forgot. It's always about how you feel, isn't it? Sad Chloe's fucking sad again. Maybe you should try giving a shit about other people for once. 
I understand you were upset because you saw your dad kissing someone other than your mom at the park, but I don't believe you even know Chloe well enough to be having this argument. You need to have a personal relationship before you can bring up someone else's character flaws to defend your own. Rachel wanted to come out to the park to confirm her father's adultery. She didn't need an escort for that but dragged Chloe along anyway, then takes all of her pain out on her afterward. What exactly does Chloe see in her again? Chloe finds the car her dad died in left inside the junkyard. Strange that never came up in the first game given how much time Chloe and Max spent here. Chloe lives out her Street Fighter fantasies by attempting to smash up this wreck within the time limit. I'm starting to think the reason Chloe's dad died was due to his habit of taking his eyes off the road. Sometime during her dream, Chloe crawled into the bloodstained driver's seat of her dad's car. Sleeping in your dad's blood is probably not the best way of getting over your issues. Remember that biker asshole who wouldn't let you into the mill? You talked your way right past him. You saw that? You couldn't have seen that. You were either inside already or hadn't arrived yet. And how did you get inside that mill? You two were the same age. Chloe had to backtalk her way in. What about Drew? When he was picking on Nathan, you got right in his face and called him out. How do you know about all these things you weren't present for? Do you know how today's D&D session ended by any chance? What I wouldn't give to leave this place and never look back. What's stopping us? How about you've known Chloe personally for one day, and you've already got in one near relationship ending fight during that amount of time? Apparently Rachel is a Dovahkiin, because she just yelled or shoaled that wildfire into existence. How did they not notice a fire that big until now? The entire mountain is glowing. We're supposed to really care about Chloe and Rachel, but all I can think about is how they should both be charged with arson for setting a wildfire that could destroy countless acres of forest and do massive property damage. Yet the only hardship they are looking at is suspension due to skipping school. Rachel never even shows a bit of remorse for it. I have no choice I but to- I made her do it. What? 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 Yesterday was all me. My idea. No principal would accept that excuse, regardless of who came up with the idea to skip school. Chloe agreed and went along with it. Ray, she loves that show. Since this is her first infraction, Mr. Don't you Amber, think, uh... I don't tell you how to run the district attorney's office. Well, you are a voter, aren't you? So you do have some say in picking the district attorney. There's a reason we have understudies for all circumstances. Accidental and deliberate. And voice actor guild strikes. Meet me at the junkyard later? You bet. Maybe pick a meeting place that's a bit closer. You guys had to hitch a ride on a train to get out here yesterday. And why even meet here in the first place? Rachel didn't seem that impressed. And Chloe has to pass by her dad's bloodstained car every time. Just you and me. Hey, Skip. Fuck em. <clears throat> Bunch of fascists. You work as a security guard for said fascists. Uh, bathroom. Then I'm out. Just want to visit the room I'm going to die in later, because this game only knows how to make the easiest of references, like having Chloe laugh at the fire alarm Max later pulls to save her life. Let's turn this expulsion into a misdemeanor by attacking the entire girl's restroom while the security guard waits outside. This would have taken at least an hour. The school security guard would have dragged you out of there well before you could finish. Do you want a hug? Stop. You have violated hug law. Please keep all beta male hugs appropriately platonic. No stepping into the hug, no resting your head on her shoulder, and no lingering. One thing I can honestly say this game does better than the first game is Chloe's relationship with her mother and Frank. Frank gets way more fleshed out this time. You might say he even has a character beyond being an asshole. Chloe finds her future truck in the junkyard. Considering that she eventually gets this thing running again with only a fresh battery and tightening a few loose bolts, I don't see why it was brought here. This was an easy repair job. Also, no way someone would send a truck to a junkyard with good tires still on it and gas in the tank, or any part that is still usable for that matter. Police do not impound vehicles by stashing them in the local junkyard. Do they not have an impound lot in Arcadia Bay? Rather than steal the battery from this truck to put in the lemon, Chloe would be better off taking this one, since all it needs is a door and removal of a tire boot. It's stealing either way. I realize that inventory space is magic and you can store anything in it, but Chloe has a car battery somewhere on her person right now. Chloe might have wanted to check for keys before she went looking for a battery. Luckily, she finds a screwdriver, which isn't effective unless you remove the ignition switch. Once again, Chloe falls asleep in the junkyard so she can have a moment with her dead dad. You'd think someone who gets this much advice from her dream therapy would have gotten over her issues by the start of the first game. Dad, you've been roasting that marshmallow for several minutes now. If you weren't already dead, that would melt a hole through your mouth. While your Two-Face cosplay is impressive, your fatherly advice sounds like it's coming from someone who smoked too much weed and majored in art history for eight years. Chloe is lucky she didn't kill herself by falling asleep in a car with a lit cigarette. Hasn't anyone ever told you not to fall asleep with a lit cigarette? You could start a fire. You are not the one to be giving fire safety tips, Smokey the Bear. You set the entire forest on fire. She was tired of having to give so many fucks all the time. Uh, phrasing. Tell me all about what it's like being daughter of Arcadia Bay's most famous scumbag. I was under the impression that the Prescotts were the biggest scumbags in all of Arcadia Bay. That was kind of a major issue in the first game. How can I make sure I don't end up like him? I hate to break this to you, but if we're talking infidelity, you end up just like him in a surprisingly short period of time. You forgot your bag. It's for you. Just a little survival kit for your new life on the lamb. 
It's considerate of you to bring Chloe a bag full of clothes, but my question is why? Chloe went home last night and I presume she'll be going home tonight as well. She's not living out here in the town dump. The lady who is supposedly sleeping with Rachel's dad gets out of Frank's RV and leaves. Frank just drove a woman to a junkyard in the middle of nowhere and then let her walk home. That's an insane amount of beans. When Frank was eating a huge plate of beans in the first game, I'm pretty certain it was because he's a poor drug dealer and that was the cheapest thing on the menu. But since that became a meme, they decided Frank is obsessed with beans and keeps his RV fully stocked. Pompidou, get up here! There is a scene in Life is Strange where if you reveal you know Pompidou's name, Frank claims the only way they could have known that is that they broke into his RV earlier. Yet here Frank is telling Chloe Pompidou's name. One of the larger puzzles in Life is Strange was Frank using code names for his customers in his books. Here he just writes their names as is. So, uh, I had this dream the other night about a cloud that swallowed Arcadia Bay. You too? According to this and Frank's search history, he was having dreams about killer storms long before Max showed up with their time powers and saw the same thing. There's no explanation for it, it's just a reference, because this game is packed full of them for no reason. Open my notebook. Last page. Frank says to turn to the last page, but Chloe turns to the middle of the notebook and finds the information there. Even when given instructions, the middle of the book cliche strikes again. It might be a little tough. I I'm not supposed to be at Blackwell. I got expelled. Still easier for you to go on campus than for me. You sell drugs to many of the students, including Nathan Prescott. Why not get one of the non-expelled students to do it instead? How can a series have a sprinkler puzzle to get through the same door in two different games? Hey, Samuel. Keeping busy? Always, Chloe Price. I didn't think you'd be returning to these hallowed halls so soon. With the change in voice actor, Samuel went from Flowers for Algernon to Sling Blade. This game doesn't know how birds work or how people taking pictures of birds work, since Evan doesn't tell Chloe off or repeatedly messing with his photo. All of that to sneak into a dormitory that was kept locked during the day for some reason. There are still students inside. Why is it locked? Women's business, Skip. As in, my uterus? I need to use the restroom. And I came all the way back to school to do it. Did you somehow not hear about the restroom she tagged this morning while you waited outside? This is the last excuse you should ever buy. You just looked at my tits. You, you did! I don't want to be the one to point this out, but you were sporting a resplendent washboard. There is nothing to stare at. You don't need to unlock the door anymore. Skip just came out of it a minute ago and didn't lock it back again. FYI, you don't get to pick the combination of a mechanical padlock. That comes with a factory selected combination, so Drew can't use his little brother's birthday for it. Damon just waltzed right onto campus and into the dorms. The reason Frank sent Chloe here in his place is because it would be easier for her to go in and out. And Damon looks skeevier than Frank, so how did he do it so easily? When will you learn that this isn't about you and your problems? This is about the Prescott name. My name. You will not embarrass me. Because the family legacy rests on the performance of the wayward son in a high school play. Don't you have, like, a private bunker filled with gold coins where you could have these conversations? See that? That was the game winking at you. I know it seemed more like it was having a stroke, but it was just the game trying to be cute again with that bunker foreshadowing line. Nathan acted like he didn't want our help yesterday. But trust me. He was glad we did. I'm sure with your help, Samantha, Nathan won't become a psychopath who drugs women and takes photos of them under the tutelage of an even bigger psycho. Especially since you weren't even in the first game. Victoria tries to drug Rachel's tea with muscle relaxer so she can take her place in the play. Playing a role in a high school play is apparently serious enough business to risk jail time for roofing a person. I recall that the previous game treated drugging a young girl as a serious issue that resulted in her suicide. Here, it's done for laughs. A misfortune most unkind has befallen us. Juliet is waylaid. That infernal inferno is the culprit. You have understudies for everyone else, but not for this one role. The teacher doesn't call an ambulance after a student collapses from drug use right in front of him. Oh. Chloe could step in for Juliet. Part of me wants to believe this is a cheeky reference to Ashley Birch being unable to reprise her role as Chloe, but I think that's giving the game too much credit. And this is just a lazy plot beat borrowed from a hundred other teen sitcoms. Why can't Chloe just write her lines on her hand like she's been doing with objectives for this entire game? I see what you're doing, game. The Tempest in a game called Before the Storm. You're not as clever as you think you are. All hail, great mistress. I, uh, I come to answer thy best pleasure. The pretend bad stage acting is less cringy than the actual real acting. I swear to thee, we shall fly beyond this isle. The corners of the world are mere prologue. I shall lay with thy apothecary in three winters' time. Thou knoweth not what it be, but it do. Did your parents not come to the play? They certainly didn't drive you back home. Let's go now. Didn't we already agree on stage? We can't just... <laughs> Why not? I would add that you have no life skills, are too young to get a job that would support the two of you, and the fact that you were down for throwing away everything to run away with a girl you've known for a little more than 24 hours. The magic you are feeling right now will fade quickly the first time you go to sleep hungry while living out of your truck, unwashed and with no idea of what you're going to do the next day. You don't even know what shape it's in. I don't need to, because I know you. 
and I know what you're capable of. In other words, we've got transportation covered. No, she doesn't. She has a limit in a junkyard that no one would ever expect to work. You want to leave tonight, remember? Your gut feeling isn't going to make an engine turn over. Hug laws temporarily rescinded. You may proceed. I think it's a sign. Those are ashes from the fire you started. It's a sign you created. A sign to get the hell out of the vicinity of the forest fire, maybe. Let's go sneak some clothes and stuff from my house. You left a bag full of your clothes with Chloe at the junkyard, which is where the truck is. So you are already packed. Rachel is her own person. She's responsible for her actions. You say that, but you were just as upset about Rachel potentially losing her role in the play as Chloe was. Lying, cheating, piece of shit. Excuse me? We saw you. Yesterday. At the Overlook. James? Kissing that woman. For someone who is so upset about her father's possible infidelity, Rachel sure ends up sleeping with a lot of people who are not Chloe in the future. That woman you saw... That wasn't my mistress. That was your mother. A big revelation, sure, but part of me is starting to suspect that Mr. Amber's current wife and the woman Rachel thought was her mother all these years is just a figment of Chloe's imagination, because she is completely irrelevant to the drama despite her position as mother. Rachel doesn't even seem to care about how she would feel about Rachel running off, and this woman agreed to marry a man and pretend to be the real mother of a child while having no children of her own. Despite having beaten up Drew a few hours ago, Damon still has enough fresh blood on him to leave a fingerprint on Frank's dead book. Rachel, I've never told you this before, but I have the ability to cast symbolic imagery during flashbacks. Seriously, Rachel and Chloe act like they are really seeing all this. You you left your wife because she was a drug addict and kept her a secret from Rachel to protect her. And your daughter eventually ends up getting into drugs and dating a drug dealer and her teacher before being murdered. You had one job. What you saw at the Overlook, it was true. We kissed. It was the saddest kiss of my life. It was a kiss. Goodbye. Making out with someone is not how you say goodbye forever and that you will never let them see their child. That's just a lazy explanation for the red herring this game used to fool the audience into believing you were cheating. Maybe you can see why James wanted to keep this a secret. There are many painful things about Rachel's past, including my own role in hiding the truth. This episode is so slow, mainly because everyone pauses during their lines. At normal speed, this episode would last only an hour. Then I learned the truth. The stars we're seeing have already been dead for millions of years. Not exactly. Most of the stars in the sky are in fact still burning, since stars visible to the naked eye are relatively close. A lot of people give this series a hard time over the cringy dialogue, the angsty teens, and melodrama, but I couldn't disagree more. I think this series has its finger on the pulse of the selfie generation. If they hold this shot of a star field any longer with that music playing, they are going to owe royalties to Stanley Kubrick's estate. I think I'd rather have the naked in class dream instead of the weird improv theater with my dead dad dream. <laughs> Spark plug. No, that's not it. I just had that replaced. Isn't improv supposed to be all about yes and? Earlier, Chloe said no to her dad's improv line about how they used to work on cars together. So you're breaking the first rule of improv as well. Look at me, sweetheart. It's going to be okay. At least until both you and your girlfriend die in tragic deaths. Also, your current situation, broken home, no job, desperate to escape this town, none of that gets any better. Now just sit back and think about the heat death of the universe in a few trillion years until this truck runs me over. Chloe grabs a box full of her dad's old clothes to wear and damn it, they don't fit her perfectly. William was a big guy, so you can't claim he had a feminine figure. I've made an agreement with your mother to trust you from now on. Did the new developers who made this, Deck 9, pay attention to the last game? David puts up security cameras in the house and barges into Chloe's room whenever he wants. I get that they wanted to develop characters like David and Nathan further, but this character growth just ends up contradicting the characters later. This connection is pretty shaky. That's the battery you installed yesterday, and it worked fine then, so what loosened it since then? Even though Chloe manages to get this truck working, there is no chance she's going to be able to get this ride legal. She doesn't legally own it and the floorboard is rusted out. Therefore, no tags, plates, or insurance. Yet she has parking tickets in the first game. Hey. Junkyard Queen. Weird. I had two different girlfriends that went by that same nickname. Rachel starts eyeballing Frank not one day after she convinced Chloe to leave town with her. This one is the fucking DA's daughter. Attacking the DA's daughter is probably not the best course of action here, especially when the DA is paying you to take care of problems for him. It might complicate the agreement. Somehow Frank was knocked over by Rachel hitting Damon with a board. It's not like Damon collided with Frank while falling. Ah! 
This would be a tense moment if I didn't already know how Rachel ultimately dies. It's kind of amazing that Rachel and Frank ever hook up in the future. Their first time meeting one another involved Rachel asking Frank where to find her mom. Frank refusing to answer and then bringing out his friend who stabs Rachel in the arm. I mean, Frank was even helping Damon drive Sarah out of town. That's going to make for some awkward conversations. But my dad has her number. Maybe in his office. You only thought of this method for finding your mom after contacting the drug dealer's plan didn't pan out? Normally, people keep their keys on their person, not hidden inside a best dad statue. A cell phone full of incriminating texts about the DA destroying evidence in return for a criminal getting rid of his ex-wife doesn't use password protection. It was simply locked in a desk drawer. Let's reconstruct this plot thread. Sarah cleaned herself up and decided to come see Rachel after all these years. Mr. Ambers then met her at the park and told her that wasn't possible due to his desire to protect Rachel. Then, without even waiting to see what Sarah would do, immediately decided to put his career and family in danger by contacting a dangerous criminal he was investigating, offering to destroy evidence against him if he could convince Sarah to leave town and forget about ever seeing Rachel, which ends with Damon abducting Sarah after he stabs Rachel. And then Damon somehow believes Mr. Ambers is still going to work with him after nearly killing his daughter. Did you follow me from the hospital? I did. How? Chloe drove here in her truck. You were on foot. You know you sound a little stalkerish right now. Stalking is defined as repeated unwanted interactions. Elliot memorized the definition of stalking, so he could then deny being a stalker. Why did you make me do that? Can't you just listen to me? Think you're clever, don't you, game? You cast Elliot to be like Warren in the last game, destined to be the nice guy who gets friendzoned, but instead he turns out to be a creepy obsessive nut. Well, you're right. I'm already on record in this video calling him Warren 2.0, so here's a sin off for throwing me for a loop on my own lack of imagination. It must run in the family, not keeping their eyes on the road, I mean. Why would a logging truck full of lumber even be coming from a burned out section of forest? This isn't even occurring in Chloe's dreams this time. Pretty sure that's a sign of insanity. Problem is, I'm dead. So how am I supposed to tell you anything? William would be good at game sins. Am I crazy? Hella crazy. I do so love how they turn that cringy line into a meme they reference at every opportunity. All this conflict resolution with her dad amounts to nothing, since Chloe goes right back to being sullen over his death at the start of the first game. Going into this, the devs had to know they couldn't resolve Chloe's issues since she still has him and life is strange. So why spend all this time pretending like something was resolved? It all ends where it began cliche. Frank was stabbed by Damon while holding him back at the junkyard, yet Frank drove to the mill to confront Damon and arrived before Chloe, but doesn't show up until after the confrontation starts. This scene is so confusingly pieced together that I thought Sarah had died from the overdose Damon administered and Chloe was speaking to her in her dreams like she does with her dad, since Damon knocked Chloe out before being wrestled out of frame and out of existence by Frank. And when Chloe wakes up, Sarah is untied and calmly waiting to speak to Chloe like they weren't almost murdered. I wasn't joking about Damon being wrestled out of existence. That's the last he's ever seen. The game later implies that Frank killed him, but this is how the villain of the game is dealt with, like an overly long acceptance speech of the Oscars that gets played off stage. You know who I am? I saw you in the play. That doesn't explain how you know her name. Chloe wasn't an official part of the cast, so she wouldn't have been on any of the promotional flyers. We need to talk about what happened. You are incredibly sober for someone who was just injected with a supposedly lethal amount of heroin. Even if you built up a tolerance over the years, you should still be higher than a kite right now. James <laughs> is a desperate man who loves his daughter. And she loves him. Tell her what happened here and you'll take that away from her. That desperate man almost got his daughter and ex-wife killed by hiring a well-known dangerous criminal. He doesn't need to be district attorney or raise a child. Here is a question the developers of this game should have asked when writing this plot. Will this story about Rachel Amber and her mother create any plot holes in the original game? I don't think they asked that question, because the answer is it does. Once Rachel goes missing, how come Chloe never suspected her of running off to her mother? That would have been my first suspicion given how obsessed Rachel is with meeting her. What a happy couple these two make. Can't wait for the NTR DLC to show Rachel cheating on Chloe with multiple people. Should be life is drama.